So guys, welcome to our little discussion session here also um, in within the Young Writers Academy. We are going to talk a little about um, some of the training sessions that we already have on video and that are planning on video. And uh, we start from the very beginning with uh, the sessions that deal with flat work and uh, poles on the ground. So, Franke, when you work the horses on flat work, what is it you are looking for in the horse and in the rider? Of course, you always first start with the rider. Uh, the rider's positions, of course, is very important. Uh, when you don't have a good seat, uh, you cannot feel the movement of the horse, so you're not able to improve the movement. Um, I always say, you know, that um, the dressage riders, they always have a deep seat. And we would like sometimes the horses to work in a light seat. And I always say, when we really want to work the horse, which ones are stupid? The jumping rider is stupid or the dressage rider is stupid? And then I see, you know, then I ask the question, why do you not ride in the class, the competition in light seat? Because it's impossible. And we think that with light seat, we can really probably work the horse. And I think this is impossible. The more we improve the movement of the horse, the more we improve the uh, body of the horse, the stronger the horse gets, the more control, the more the horse will understand us. And I think this is the main thing because we need a lot of understanding when we do the competition. Very good. Jean-Maurice, do you have anything uh, that you would add to this also? What's your emphasis? Yeah, for sure. I start also by the rider's position. And because if you don't create the harmony uh, of the horse who is moving with the athlete, who will jump, who will move, uh, dressage, uh, jumping, eventing, whatever you do. If the rider is not strong on top of the horse, you can't go anywhere. And also considering the horse, I think the locomotion is very important. And uh, in show jumping, we spend much more time on the ground to prepare a jump. So if we don't have the, the dressage, because we call that like this, but the flat work, it's impossible to be consistent and to uh, manage a competition. Especially, uh, as we know, the, the, the time allowed is shorter and shorter and we need, we can't go so you, we can't allow to open the turns, etc. So we have to stay in the right uh, design and being able to control everything. And for the horse, I would like to add the old principle of France: the horse stay have to stay calm, straight, uh, and uh, forward. And even if you turn, the horse has to be forced to have the maximum of locomotion. But we will come back maybe on that point. As an active rider now, what, what is it you're looking for when you work your horses on the flat? Okay, first I have to ask myself, what's my goal? Um, my goal is in the end, in the course, I want that my horse is listening to me. My horse has to learn to follow me, to follow the rider, but also on the other hand, trust the rider. Um, I mean, in the end, we always want to have the, the body of the horse compact. And then we have to ask ourselves, how do we get there? In the end, we want the horse relaxed, like from inside and outside. So we have to take the time, we have to be patient. And then you have this um, scale of training when you start with the rhythm, then you have the suddenness, then you have the contact, the push, straightness, and at the end, the collection. So you cannot start with a collection when the horse doesn't have the good rhythm. So um, in the end, I, I have to set my goal and, and then go step by step, listen to the horse. Every horse is different. And I think the most important thing is also that the horse is trusting the, the rider. In these training sessions that we have videos on, you have in both cases poles in a straight line. Uh, what is it you are looking for and what's the reaction you are waiting for? Uh, when you work the horses over poles on the, in a straight line. What's your opinion, Jean-Maurice? I consider that horses have to respect a pole even if it's on the ground. 
So they have to, to learn how to lift on each pole. And I start by the walk. The walk is very important to develop the, the pace in a good way, in a good balance. I mean, they have to uh, lift up and to be proud and to be active in the, each pace. And it's interesting to see, for example, when you start in trot, that most of the horses are trying to jump all the poles together because they're scared. Because most of the time riders ride with too much pressure, a normal fence, and the horses anticipate the jump. So they have to learn how to pad the poles, relax, and so on and so on. And then I go in canter. And I consider that the poles, even in the ground, the rider has to consider this as a fence. I mean, it's the same process. The fact they turn, they come to the line, and they keep the horse straight with a good reason to make the movement. And it's very interesting to see how you can improve uh, horses and riders by doing that. And it's also a way when an amateur rider doesn't have so many horses to ride per day, it's a good way also to, to fix the distance and to get used to both. Training session, Frank, you have also poles in a circle. What's, in your opinion, the difference of the training then with poles on a circle versus on in a straight line? I think definitely, you know, what John Maurice just told us as well, you know, in the trot, how many people today do not still use trotting poles? So they are already, you know, when I give a, when I give a clinic and I put up trotting poles, half of the riders, they cannot do it because the horse is completely afraid because they never do it. And normally you should start with a young horse when he's four or five years old and you start a little bit, you start with poles. So she, he should learn to work with poles. So all the exercises, what we're doing is already, you know, that we start for young horses. When the horse is older, you use the same things because it's always you come back to the base. Especially, you know, for me, what is the nice thing when you use these poles on a circle? First of all, you can go left hand and right hand because it's important in the future as well that the horse learns to trust the mouth. So if you see it is not correct and the contact with the mouth is not correct, he will always be a little bit afraid for the mouth. But on a circle, you're able to give a little bit of impulsion you can keep the contact with the mouth so he learned to give in in his movement because the, the legs have to lift up a little bit so he has to concentrate on that so he will give in his body in the end and this is the nice thing when you have a horse what's a little bit stiff on the right uh, or it's a little bit stiff on the left you really you practice already on flat work with poles already that the horse is giving in correct trust the mouth and get a nicer rhythm. And even there, what I always think is necessary, you know, that uh, I put always the poles not too wide, because I want to teach him that the horse is waiting for me. When I go to the circle, the horse should wait for my seat. He should wait when I tell him, you know, he's able to go. And this is part of trust as well, that he trusts the rider that he can wait. Uh, what's your opinion? What is your goal when you're training over poles? That's exactly what Frank and Jean-Maurice just said. In the end, you want to have the correct movement of the horse. You have to start with walk, trot, and then canter. And when you have the feeling the movement and the canter is correct, the horse is listening to the seat, then I can maybe um, start changing the number of strides. For example, on the straight line, I can, um, for example, start with one line with five strides. The next time I would do one more stride. Then and maybe one less that you always have a bit uh, change so the horse really learns to trust the rider also what Frank said that the horse has a good feeling to wait for the rider actually and um, this is for me on the straight line quite important and when you have a circle it's also a lot about the listening to the legs the inside and the outside leg because when you want to go a bit outside you need to, to push the horse maybe a bit more outside with your inside leg. Um, if you want to do the circle a bit smaller, you need a bit more the outside leg. So, um, yeah, this is very important than making some circles, exercises on the circle. And the, the horse really has to listen in different ways, uh, ways for the seat, legs, everything. Thank you. Uh... In these early training sessions, we also started with jumping a single obstacle and a smaller combination. What's 
in your opinion, the most important things to look for when you when you start on on these kind of relatively straightforward uh, uh, exercises? What's your opinion, Franke? Okay, for me, maybe it's a little bit different than a lot of people because I think, you know, first of all, when you start with small fences, to make from the first fence, make the jump correct. That means that you have the correct impulsion, that you have the correct control, that you're able, you know, to develop something. You know, I see always a lot of people, they just go to the normal small fence and with a lot of risk because the horse is not concentrating, the rider is not concentrating, and it's, I, I always think this should not happen. The other thing is as well that when you go correct distance and the horse is landing correct, the impulse stay, the horse in the fence, he stays compact, means that his body is staying together. Then he will land a lot easier, will be much better for his legs as well, that he's not heavy uh, landing, you know, it should be light on the feet. And as well, what we can practice, you know, you can even practice on a small fence to make in your mind that the fence is one meter sixty. So you start with more inputs in and more that you say, okay, I want to have a little bit more going there, but still that you have to be able to control this. When we just make a big fence and you say, okay, and then you start, some people, they lose the control because they think the fence is big and now I have to move more forward. And then already, you know, they get the problem that the control is going and then the body is not staying together. And then you have the problem after the jump that you lose the control there. And what do you say, Jean Maurice? Yeah, obviously I agree. Uh, I consider that we have three zones of, uh, for a jump. The preparation, the takeoff, the suspension, yeah. the parabola of the jump and the landing area. And in a line, for example, the landing area becomes the approach because you have a fence, for example, five, four, three, uh, whatever number of threat you want. So I insist also, uh, also on the rider because if the rider, and we come back to the first question, is not able to afford the jump and to follow the jump and to recover his own balance after landing, he will lose maybe one, two, three strides before, before coming back to, to be able to control the horse. So it's interesting, that's why we need to do that. On, I agree with Frank on small friends to start, to make sure that we have the harmony and the full control after landing to be able to continue on the next. Of course, the, 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 the strength and, and the fact to be, you know, strength, strength before, straight, sorry, before, over the jump and after the jump. You decide where you want to go afterwards, straight or on dog legs, but you know because you work the course. So it's important to practice that in a good way. I, I would like to add one little part. I would like to add one little part as well. You know, that people think always, you know, that after the jump, they first want to slow down. In my opinion, first you have, when you're landing, the first thing you should activate the horse. Because then he is very is early. Then after this, when he is active, it's easier to come back. You know, when the horse is landing on his front and he's with his head down on the ground, and you don't activate him, he will stay with his on the front. And then it's much more difficult, you know, to get him up again and to get him under uh, an imbalance again. So I think it's necessary that after the jump, you first have to activate, activate in positive impulsion, and then to control the horse. What makes you satisfied when you are training on a jumping a combination? It's actually just what Frank mentioned at the end. For me, it's really important. Like when I go to the combination, I want to have the horse active. Like every stride should be the same, but active doesn't mean fast. Like I want to have the horse collected actually and um, the same with them so that I'm going prepared into the combination. And then it's what John Maurice said, after the combination, then you have to see which direction you want to go. But anyway, just don't slow the horse directly down. Keep the horse also active after the combination. It's not just like you jump the combination and you say like, okay, now we are finished, it was good. No, it's then preparing again for the next thing to come. And okay, for sure there's a difference if you have a double vertical uh, combination or you have a big oxide inside, like at the end of the show. But I think it's exactly what Frank and John Maurice said. First, you need to do it with small jumps. And if you're doing these, small jumps, good, the horse is collected, active, then it's very easy to make the 
the fences bigger also and just do the same. Anything you guys would like to add to what Laura said? Yeah, I, th I think what is uh, I think what is very important to train companies, and that's why I'm always starting with verticals, because the thing is the horse first has to learn to get a good rhythm. You know, you see a lot of horses in the beginning, you know, when you put up for a young horse and you put up two strides, the first stride will always be a very big stride and the second stride will always be a very short stride. So there as well to practice first that the horse get a consistent rhythm. And this is necessary as well on small offenses that the horse is not jumping, running, and that he's waiting there as well for his seat, but active waiting. And this is already, you know, when you, you when I train, you know, that the, uh, the correct balance in between the jumps is so important that you get a good rhythm because the rhythm in, in general is so important for our competitions because it's the same. If we have an in the combination, the same between distances. When you have four strides or you have five strides, it depends what kind of rhythm you have. But if the horse has never learned to have a correct rhythm, it's very difficult to, practice, to, to do in a competition. Thank you very much. This is what we will uh, save as the, the first discussion session.